Him. It's yeah. worth it. Amen. Yeah. It's worth it. Amen. Hallelujah. My, my, my. <coughs> I'm going to hit you and run this morning. Last week we talked about the little foxes. Amen. Right. Don't forget next Sunday morning Sister Lynn will be with us. Lord willing. And uh, next Saturday at 12 o'clock down here on the river Sister Pam's River Fest will be going on. Looks like she's got enough people listed there to go for a day and a half. <laughs> Hallelujah. But we'll be down there for a little while. Lord willing. I don't know if we'll be there for all of it but we will be down there for a little while. Hallelujah. We talked last week about the little foxes. As a matter of fact, we used the Scripture in Song of Solomon, the second chapter, the 15th verse. Take us the foxes, the little foxes that spoil the vines, for our vines have tender grapes. And we talked about how that these little foxes, these things that seem like little things, can do so much damage. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. How that they can hinder your fruit from coming forth. And we talked about things like what? Bitterness, strife, malice, jealousy. Amen. And I made a statement last week that I think we need to touch on a little bit more here this morning. I said, as the Spirit revealed it to us, I said that many times our grudges, our bitterness, our hatred, we treat it as if it is a newborn baby like a mother does a newborn and we nurse it. All right. Amen. Amen. We take care of it. It's ours. It belongs to us. Absolutely. And God forbid should anybody touch it. Amen? Right. If the preacher gets on it, says anything about it, oh, he just don't understand. If someone actually says something to you about this, you're like, oh, don't you judge me. You haven't been there. Come on. You're not my judge. Come on. Amen? Exactly. So we cradle it like a baby. We nurse it like a baby. We take care of it like a baby. Yeah. And if anybody messes with how many people knows what it's like if somebody messes with your kids? <laughs> Amen? <coughs> oh, you can say what you want to to your kids, but the minute somebody else says something about your kids, you get mad. Amen? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Come Don't on. tell me that ain't true. I know it's true. Amen? Amen? You can say what you want to about your husband, but the minute somebody else says something about your husband, they're in trouble. Amen? All right. Same way with our kids. Amen? Right. Amen? Don't let anybody else say anything about them. That's the way it is with our grudges that we hold. Right. That's the way it is with our bitterness that we call. That's the way it is with our ugly baby that we're packing around. Amen? This morning's message, what there is of it, is called, Don't Touch My Ugly Baby. Amen? All right. We nurse it. We pack it around. I'm talking about our bitterness, our grudges, our hatred, our malice, right. our strife this morning. Amen. I'm talking about the things that, that spoil the vine and keep us from bringing forth the fruit of the Spirit in our life. Amen. I ain't talking about the big ugly things like we mentioned last week. Amen. About murder and shooting somebody or killing somebody or robbing a bank. I'm talking about the things that have moved into our vineyard and we do not deal with and we allow them to go on thinking that those things are untouchable for us. Amen. Don't you touch that. Oh, you can preach a lot of things. But don't you don't you touch my unforgiveness toward my father because of what he did. Don't you touch my unforgiveness because of my husband of what he did. Amen. Yes. Somebody gonna have to touch those things. If you don't touch those things and begin to deal with them and say, God, forgive me and take this out of my life, you ain't gonna have no fruit. Amen. You ain't gonna have no fruit. Amen. Right. So we're talking this morning about your ugly baby. Amen. Right. We nurse it like a mother nursing a newborn. Instead of dealing with it, taking it to the altar, we chew on it. Amen. We nurse it. We rehearse it. It gets bigger. Amen. What happens to babies when you take care of them? Yeah. They grow. Right here on this front pew is one of which <laughs> this is what happens to them. Amen. Right. They grow up. Right. They get bigger. Come on. That's the way things are in your life. Amen. These little things, and I told you last week, we call them little simply because the Bible calls this in this scripture little foxes and because so we can bring it down to our way of thinking you know what we call little things yeah amen Come on. these are just little things amen. amen and it's always surprising to me how that we think somebody else's baby's ugly but ours is beautiful yeah. bless him lord Come on. Preach. are you getting that this morning how many times you ever looked at somebody's baby and you didn't say it to their face but as you walked off you were thinking that one ugly baby Amen. Hey, hey, confession good for the soul. You may not admit it, but I'll admit it. Amen. But your baby ain't no baby as pretty as your baby. Amen. All right. Ain't no baby 
baby as precious as your baby. Amen. Why? Because you're attached to it. You're nursing it. You're taking care of it. It belongs to you. It's part of you. That's where your bitterness is. That's where your bitterness has become. It's became a part of you. Amen? And oh, my, 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 my. And I know that ain't popular this morning, but it'll preach. Amen? Amen. Your malice is, has become a, your unforgiveness towards your brother, your sister, your mother, your daddy, your cousin, your nephew, your husband, your wife. All that has become a part of you. You have nursed it for years. And the more you've nursed it, the stronger it's got. Right. And now it's harder now for you to get rid of it than it would have been if you had dealt with it to start with. Because it's getting bigger. Come on. This thing's growing. Right. Amen. True. Your ugly baby that you pack around. Amen. Amen. But don't touch my ugly baby. <clears throat> Amen. <laughs> I've nursed it. It's part of me. It's growing. Yeah. Amen. Come on. What we talked about last week? We talked about Cain. Right. And his brother Abel. Amen. We talked about how that whenever they brought their offerings, and it's in Genesis, the fourth chapter, how that whenever they brought their offerings before the Lord. Well, first of all, let me touch on this for just about two minutes and a half, and then I'm going to move on. How many people have ever heard of the serpent seed doctrine? Amen. Amen. William Brandon, Brandon came out with it years and years ago. There's still a whole lot of mass of people that follow his movement and that teach his same damnable doctrines today. Amen? Come on. I'm beginning, the more I look at some of the doctrine of some of these, what we called men of God and women of God from years gone past, I'm beginning to wonder if they were really men and women of God. All right. I had to go over like a lead balloon because whenever I was being raised, we heard names like William Branham and Catherine Coleman and on down the line. Yeah. When you go to digging into what exactly they believed, it makes you scratch your head and wonder. Wait a minute. Yeah. See, the devil can do signs and wonders too. Right. You don't believe me? Go over there to the book of Revelations and look what the Antichrist is going to deceive some people with. Amen. Signs and wonders. Yeah. What about the magicians over there in Egypt? They emulated a lot of things. They couldn't emulate it all, but they emulated some of the things. Right. He can do some signs and wonders. Exactly. But the serpent seed doctrine says that whenever Eve went to the tree and the serpent beguiled her, that even the serpent actually had sexual relations. And that Cain was born because of the intimate relationship that Eve had with the snake. That Cain was actually the seed of the serpent. Well, let's see how many scriptures it takes to debunk that theory. Genesis 4 and 1 says, And Adam knew, his, knew Eve his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain. That's it, folks. That's it. Exactly. That's enough right there to tell you that the serpent seed doctrine is not of God. Absolutely. Adam and Eve had intimate relationships. She conceived. She brought forth Cain. Right. There's no good seed, evil seed, predestined for hell, predestined for heaven. Come on. Amen. Amen. Hope we ain't got no Branhamites in here this morning. <laughs> I don't want to offend you, but it's of the devil. All right. Serpent seed doctrine is not of God. Cain was born. <laughs> Adam was his daddy. Eve was his mama. The serpent was not. Amen? Come on. And she again bare his brother Abel. Oh, well, wait a minute. She said, I have gotten me a, she, I have gotten a man from the Lord. And she again bare his brother Abel. And Abel was a keeper of the sheep, but Cain was a tiller of the ground. And in the process of time, it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord. And Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and the fat thereof, and the Lord said they're bringing their offerings to the Lord, to the altar. Amen? Amen. And the Bible says that Cain brought an offering. Yeah. It was the work of his hands. It was what he had tilled. It was not a blood sacrifice. Come on. And the Bible teaches us that his offering was rejected, yeah. that Abel's was accepted, and the Bible says that Cain was wroth. He was mad. He was angry. Yeah. He was hot with anger. Come on. And we learned here last week that if he'd have stopped it right there, it could have stopped right there whenever God confronted him and said, Cain, what are you doing angry? Why are you wroth? Why is your countenance falling? See, this is the first time that we find the word wroth in the Bible. 
This is the first time that we find man getting angry with another human being. And we see what that brings forth when it is not dealt with. Your anger, when it is not dealt with, will bring forth death. Amen? Your ang if your baby, your anger, your ugly baby of anger, if it is not dealt with, will grow up and cause you more damage than you ever thought possible, which is exactly what happened to Cain. We find that Cain didn't deal with it. Say, Brother Billy, how do you know? I'm glad you asked me. We'll read it a little bit farther. He said, Why is thy countenance fallen? God continues to tell him in verse 7, If thou doest well, shalt thou not be accepted? And if thou doest not well, sin lieth at the door. And unto thee shall be his desire and thou shalt rule over him. This is it right here. This is point blank. This is the time he could have dealt with his ugly baby, but he didn't do it. You know why? Because he wanted to coddle it. He wanted to nurse it. He wasn't willing to get rid of it. That's the same thing that happens with us. We get angry. We get mad. We hold a grudge. We get unforgiveness. And we don't want to let it go. Come on, brother. And Cain didn't let it go. Come on, Amen. Amen. Right. He didn't let it go. Amen. He nursed it. That's true. Amen. I had to go back this morning and get my baby that I left at home. I wish we could leave some of our babies at home. Right. I wish we could get rid of them. Amen. That's right. And I'm talking about anger, malice, bitterness, strife. Right. Some of them ugly babies we pack around with us. Come on. Amen. Come on. Cain got a hold of his ugly baby, and instead of taking it to the altar and said, Oh God. Forgive me. Next time I'll bring the right sacrifice. Forgive me for being angry. He said he wasn't just angry at Abel. He's angry at God. Yeah. God didn't accept it. He gets angry at God. He gets angry at his brother. And why? All because of his ugly baby. All right. It wasn't Cain's. I mean, it wasn't Abel's. It, it, wasn't, it wasn't God's. It was his sin. Amen. It was his unforgiveness. It was his anger. It was his bitterness. That this root of bitterness that took, took root and defiled more than him. Amen? Right. That we talked about last week. Amen. So he packs around his ugly baby. And he nurses it. All right. And he takes care of it. And he coddles it. Yeah. And he protects it. Yeah. And that's exactly what you do. That's exactly what we have been guilty of. Yeah. Protecting our grudges. Yeah. Protecting our... This is mine. We were around like a battle scar. All right. We don't forget it. We don't let go of it. Oh. We rehearse it as many chances as we get to whoever that will listen. Yeah. Amen. We nurse it. It gets stronger. It gets bigger. Until finally we can't control it. And it takes over. That's what happened to Cain. That's it. How do you know, Brother Billy? How do you know Cain didn't take care of it? How do you know Cain nursed it? How do you know that Cain didn't disperse it and he didn't deal with it? Well, I'll tell you how I know that. Listen to this. Here God is dealing with him, trying to get him to repent of it, telling him that it's not too late. You can deal with it right now. My Lord and my God, how many times have we had that opportunity in our life? Come on. Amen? Right. I guarantee you, you're sitting in here this morning and this is not something that's going over your head. This is hitting you between eyeballs. There are people in your life that you can't bring yourself to forgive. There are, there's bitterness in your life that you can't bring yourself to let go of. There are ugly babies that you hold on to and they keep getting bigger and they keep getting stronger and you keep thinking, oh, you know, everything's fine and great and it's, it's funny because we think everybody else's baby's ugly. Yeah. We think everybody else's sin is big. We think, oh my goodness, we think everybody else's, the, 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 the speck that they have in their eye, amen, got to be got out. We, they got to deal with that. They got to deal with that. We got to get that out while we walk around with our ugly baby of our own, amen. Right. Not getting rid of it. Absolutely. Not dealing with it. Come on, what about right. the woman there that the, the hypocrites brought to Jesus and said, we caught this woman in sin. Yeah. She was sinning. Right. She committed adultery. Yeah. She deserves to be stoned. Aren't you glad this morning that we don't have that law implemented in the church? Amen. We'd have to have to stone it every Sunday morning. Right. Because half the people in the church commit adultery. Oh, Lord. I got one, oh, Lord. <laughs> I said half the people in the church commit adultery. Sleeping with whoever they want to sleep with. Uh, messing with whoever they want to mess with. Oh. Married, seeing other people. Yeah. Amen. Oh, Married. Living with other people. On, Amen. Up. We got some people, and they ain't been too long ago. We had people that they's married. They had a lover living with them and their husband. Yeah. Amen. Come on. So it's a good thing we don't do the stoning thing. Because right. if we did, we'd have to kill a bunch of Christians every Sunday morning. That's right. Because most of them are living in sin. Exactly. Most of them have been coddling their ugly baby all week long. Yeah. Won't get rid of it. Amen. But somebody else is seeing. Oh no, that's that's another thing. Yeah, that's something else. And what Jesus tell them hypocrites? 
He that is without sin cast the first stone. They had to drop the rocks and go back to the house. Exactly. Even though their sin wasn't as big to them as Sister Cindy's was. Amen. Yeah. Even though their sin wasn't as big to them as Brother David's was. Amen. All right. Don't touch my baby. Yeah. Don't touch my ugly baby. Come on. Amen. I'm going to nurse it. Amen. I'm going to rehearse it. I'm going to coddle it. I'm going to take care of it. Right. It's going to get bigger. And it's going to kill you. Right. It's going to kill you. Amen. Amen. I never did watch it before. But I've heard enough of it from Christians, which is a sad thing. I didn't have to learn this from the world. But about that little evil dude named Chucky. You know what I'm talking about? You think Chucky was bad. He ain't nothing compared to the bitterness and what it's going to do to you if you don't get rid of it. Absolutely. Amen. It's going to kill you spiritually. Amen. If you don't learn to forgive, right. it's going to block God's forgiveness from you. Amen. I didn't write the book, but he says if you can't forgive, you can't be forgiven. That's right. That's what he said. Oh, it's stout. Amen. But it's the truth, please. Yes, sir. It'll keep God's, it'll keep the Holy Spirit from bringing forth fruit in your life. Come on. Amen. Come on. So Cain, he doesn't take care of it. How do you know this, Brother Billy? Because the Bible says in verse 8, And Cain talked with Abel his brother. I don't know what they were talking about. And Cain talked with Abel his brother. And it came to pass when they were... Maybe they wasn't even talking about what had happened. Have you ever been around people and they were just fine to your face? Yeah. Down underneath the surface, they were holding something against you. Right. You didn't hear it from them. You heard it from everybody else because when they got away from you, they told them. Amen. Here is Cain and his brother. They're out there talking in the field. The Bible says that Cain rose up right. against Abel and he, his brother and slew him. Right. He killed him. Yeah. Why? Because his ugly baby that he'd been nursing got bigger right. and stronger. And no doubt the wrath and the rage got more than Cain could bear. <clears throat> Yeah. And he lashed out against his brother. He lashed out against his brother. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. What's your ugly baby this morning? Mm. Is it bitterness? Is it hatred? Is it unforgiveness? Is it wrath? God comes along and He says, Hey, where is Abel your brother? <laughs> I don't know where he's at. Uh -huh. I'm not his keeper. Yeah. Now he's a liar. He knew where he was at. He right. killed him. Right. God says, what is it you've done? The voice of thy brother's blood cried unto me from the ground. And if you'll drop down to verse 13, you'll find out what this ugly baby did to Cain. And Cain said unto the Lord, my punishment is greater than I can bear. Why? Because he didn't deal with it. The end is going to be more than you can bear if you don't deal with it. Amen. 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 Yeah. If you don't take that thing to the altar and say, oh God, I don't want this. I know every one of us are human. We all have feelings of emotion. We, have, we feel things like anger and hate and bitterness. We feel those things. Those are works of the flesh. And when those works of the flesh are manifest, then it's the time for us to take them to the altar and say, oh God, yeah. forgive me. Amen. Yeah. Do you know sometimes God lets things happen in our lives so we to bring those things to the surface that we've kept covered up and we haven't dealt with. Amen. And when they come up, instead of us dealing with them, we shove them back down in there. Right. We just we suppress them. We keep them down. We hold them close. We take care of them a little bit longer until they get a little bit stronger. Amen. Until finally they're more than we can control. And the punishment or the circumstance or the, the end thereof is more than we can bear. Right. The consequences. Amen. Of your ugly baby. That's the Amen. Everybody else's, everybody else's baby's ugly, Come but on. yours ain't. Right. Amen. Come on. Yours is precious. Why? Because you've nursed it. You've kept it. You've held on to it. Right. Amen. Cain wasn't the only one in the Bible that, 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 that gives us examples of this. Cain was wroth. What happens? It grows into murder. Right. Amen. Saul, his baby starts out as rebellion. It goes to wrath, jealousy, murder, suicide. Mm -hmm. Listen to me this morning, church. God wanting to get down where we live. Mm -hmm. He's wanting to show us why we ain't bringing forth the fruit that we're supposed to bring. He's wanting to put His finger on your ugly baby this morning Amen. and say, deal with it. Right. 
the bitterness that you feel, that you don't understand what they did. God understands, and He's still telling you to deal with it. Right. Amen. Come on. The hatred, the unforgiveness. Amen. And as a pastor, you see this a lot. Not only do I deal with it in my life, but there's a lot of times people will come to me while this, and they'll spill their guts. Yeah. <clears throat> and a lot of it is, has to do with this. Mm -hmm. It's people that they can't forgive. People that they can't get past. Amen? Amen. They just can't let it go. Right. Have you ever had the problem you just couldn't let <laughs> something go? You just couldn't lay it down. Amen. Amen. You just couldn't get rid of it. Right. You tried, uh -huh. but you find yourself chewing on it some more. Yeah. Rehearsing it some more. Whoa. Taking care of it some more. And even though you want to get rid of it, you try to lay it down. You find yourself still. You're still packing around the same old baby you've been packing around for 10 years. Yes. It just keeps getting uglier. Keeps getting stronger. Come on. Keeps getting bigger. Come on. Keeps getting harder to deal with. Right. Amen. Who else? David. David, when he walked out on the hilltop, the, hill, the housetop, when he walked out on the housetop that night, I didn't have to go no further than that. When he looked and he saw Bathsheba taking the bath, could have stopped right there. Yeah. But he didn't. Right. He fed the baby. Amen. Do you hear what I said? Yes. He fed the baby. Amen. And before it was over, he not only had looked upon a woman and lusted after her. Yeah. He had committed adultery. He had murdered her husband. Right. And it all could have stopped right there that night on that housetop. Right. Or that morning. Absolutely. He could have gave it up right there. He could have went to the Lord with it right there, but he didn't. Amen. And his baby just kept getting uglier. Right. He just holds on to it. He nurses it. Come on. See, God told me to do this, so maybe this will stick in your mind. <clears throat> maybe this will stick in my mind. Maybe you won't forget the morning that the pastor stood before the church coddling his baby. His ugly baby. Amen. Amen. Nursing it. Yeah. Hugging it. Loving it. Not willing to let go of it. I'm talking about your bitterness this morning. I'm talking about our unforgiveness this morning. I'm talking about our malice and our strife this morning. Amen. Come on. i got to hurry. What about Judas? <clears throat> it starts out as greed. Yes, sir. Ends up with him betraying Jesus and committing Amen. suicide. Greed to kill you too. Right. Gotta have it. Gotta have some more of it. Huh. How about Ahab? You remember Ahab and Naboth's vineyard? I want his vineyard so bad. So what happens? <laughs> Jezebel has him killed. Right. Ahab gets what he wants. <clears throat> his greed. Turns to murder. Your baby will grow up sooner or later. Your ugly baby grows up to be a monster. Right. Brother Billy, what are some of these things? Oh, I'm glad you asked me. I've got to hurry up. Proverbs 6 and 16 says, These six things doth the Lord hate. Yea, seven are an abomination unto him. A proud look. Proud. Oh, man, he starts out with some things that we don't think much about, do we? Hey, some preachers, my goodness, I just soon not even be around them. All right. <clears throat> Amen? They just got that proud look. And trust me, it ain't just that they look proud. They make you feel little time they get through with you. Amen? Amen. Sharing their knowledge and their things, you know. Yeah. Really all it is just tear you down. Right. Amen? Amen? So they can feel better than you when they walk off. Sad thing about this, they don't really understand or know it. Most of them don't. Some of them do, but a lot of them, they just they don't even know that it's there. Yeah. They done, they, they, they let that baby suck on so long that they don't even realize that it's nursing. They don't even realize that it's getting bigger. Come on. Some of them, I don't even hang with some of them. A lying tongue. Uh oh. That's listed here. You know what the Bible says about the tongue, don't you? Little member. Set on fire of hell. Yeah. Amen. Come on. My goodness. Boy, does he hit us where we live or what? How about hands that shed innocent blood? We can talk about that in the natural. Aborting babies by the millions every day. Yeah. Amen. God hates that. Amen. Amen. Right. Go on down here. I gotta hurry. A heart that deviseth wicked imaginations. Ooh, how about that? Feet that be swift in running to mischief. Always gotta stir something up. Yeah. Amen. Come on. Gotta run, stir up some mischief. 
Amen. Some people they don't they, they can't live unless there's some drama going on. Right. Amen. Yeah. And these same people say, Oh, I can't take this drama. And you're the one causing it. Yeah. Right. You're the one causing the drama. Absolutely. Facebook is a good example as any. Amen. 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 Get on there and stir up all this stuff, and I can't deal with this drama. Well, quit stirring it up, you stinker. Right. Amen. Deal with your ugly baby. True. Amen. Quit walking around pointing your finger at everybody else's sin and deal with that which is in your life. All right. Everybody else's is worse than yours, I know. Everybody else's baby's uglier than Come yours. On. Amen. Come on. Listen to what he says. A false witness that speaketh lies, and he that soweth discord among brethren. Wow. That's good stuff right there. Chew on that there for a while. Stirs up strife. Hey, some people just jump from one church to another and trying to start trouble. Right. I ain't got time to hit all these this morning. We got to go to house. How about the works of the flesh that we talked about last week? Adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, meaning etc. There's more of them. Amen. Amen. These destroy the fruit. What fruit? Love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. I ask you again this morning, what ugly baby are you packing around with you? Is it bitterness? Is it strife? Is it malice? Is it sowing discord among the brethren? Amen? Amen. What kind of ugly baby are you packing around? I ain't talking about Ethan this morning. I'm talking about your bitterness. Amen. How about your hatred and unforgiveness? Right. God wants us to deal with these things. Yes, Not Lord. for His sake, for yours. Amen. You can't bring forth no fruit, Brother Sleece, if you don't get rid of this stuff. Exactly. And the only way to get rid of it is to take it to the old rugged cross and say, wash me, cleanse me, help me to overcome. You can't do it within yourself. Right. You can, that's our problem. We try to do it within ourselves. Amen. Right. Many times we try to overcome things on our own. We can't do it. We have to enter into His rest of His victory of the cross of Calvary. That's where He nailed your bitterness. That's where He nailed your unforgiveness. That's where He nailed your malice and your strife today. Amen. It's time for us to take our ugly babies and lay them down on the altar. Amen. Oh. And ask God to help us Amen. so that we can grow, so that we can bring forth fruit in the Spirit, right. so that we can be a witness to other people, Amen. so that we can be a positive influence in a world that is lost and dark and undone without God, yeah. so that we can show others the light and the love of Jesus. Amen? So it's not for God's benefit, it's for yours and for the, the souls of lost men. Amen? That are dying and going to hell without God. Time to get rid of your ugly baby. Quit getting mad every time somebody touches on a sore subject with you. Your bitterness, your unforgiveness, your malice, your strife. I preached a while back in Owensboro, Kentucky. And I preached the message on unforgiveness. And afterwards there was a woman that came up and she began to tell us of how she had harbored unforgiveness against someone in her life that had committed ungodly things against her whenever she was younger. And she said, I don't want to hate them anymore. I don't want to hold this unforgiveness against them anymore. Amen. See, we got to come to that place. Yes, sir. I don't want it, God. I don't want it. I'm tired of it feeding off of me. Amen. My goodness. Good. I'm tired of it sucking the life out of me. Right. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Time to get rid of our ugly babies. Amen. Come on. Bitterness, hatred, malice, whatever it is that you're carrying around today. It's weighting you down. Amen. That's right. It's time to get rid of it. Take it to the cross. Give it to Jesus. Come on. Amen. Ask Him to help you. I can't tell you that it's going to be gone in an instant. But I can tell you the more that you talk to Him about it, the more that you lay it down, the more that you give it to Him, the more that you ask for His forgiveness, the more that you turn it over to Him, the easier yeah. it will get for you to let go of that thing. <clears throat> Our problem is we ain't been dealing with it. That's right. We ain't been doing nothing about it. Amen. We've just been too busy looking at everybody else's ugly baby, leaving ours alone while it keeps getting bigger That's and right. uglier. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Somebody else have something this morning?